God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Pilgrims on this journey, you are welcome here. Your deepest hopes are welcome here. Your beautiful dreams are welcome here. This Advent season, you are welcome to journey with us towards Bethlehem. We're so glad everybody is here this morning, and I want to tell you about some of the things that are happening after church today and then in the coming weeks. After church today, we have pageant dress rehearsal right here in this space. Taking place at the exact same time will be a fabulous coffee hour. Uh, so we encourage you, if you are not part of the pageant, go to coffee hour, get some coffee, talk to some people. Um, that will be, uh, that will make this space available for our pageant folks to be in dress rehearsal mode. Um, and then after that, we're crossing our fingers, we're crossing our fingers that the rain and wind hold off just long enough for our youth group to have s'mores today. That is the big plan and we're excited about that. Next Sunday, two big things happening. In worship, we have the pageant and some beautiful special music. After worship, we have the Christmas party, which will take place in Pilgrim Hall. The food is all provided thanks to one of our families who is taking care of that, and we will sing carols. So if you have not yet had enough of uh, we come, oh come all you faithful, don't worry, you will get your chance next Sunday after church at the Christmas party. Now then there are two more things happening that you need to know about. Longest night, we do this near the solstice and this year on December 21st. This is a service for folks who would like the season to slow down a little bit, who are maybe not full of grins every day this season, who have something that they are anxious or sad about. We will do a Zoom-only service at 6 o'clock and then an in-person-only service at 7 o'clock. And those will both be in Pilgrim Hall. Uh, there will be music and it will be a beautiful moment um, to reflect and to acknowledge that sometimes this season is hard. That's the 21st. Then on the 24th, we have two worship services. We have a very quiet and brief worship service in the morning at 10.30, just me and prayers uh, and time to be together in a quiet and peaceful Christmas Eve setting. And then that night at six o'clock, a festival of carols and readings. It will be wonderful, all the music, all the candlelight. Uh, and so you can come to both, or you can come to just the evening service. It depends on what you'd like to do on that day. We just want you to know what those two services are going to be like. That's the scoop for the rest of the Advent and Christmas season. We'll talk about what comes after Christmas later. Sarah, do you have any other announcements? Yes, we have Sunday school today. Um, sixth grade and under can come downstairs um, when you're called. Sixth grade and up is welcome to come to today. We're doing an arts and crafts day, so it might be fun. Awesome. And that will be immediately following the anthem uh, will be when the kids and youth go downstairs or stay in worship. That's great. Thank you. And now Rich, our liturgist, is going to lead us in the piece. Peace be with you. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another.
Please join me in the call to worship. O magnify our God with me, and let us exalt God's name together. Our souls magnify the Lord. Our spirits rejoice in God, our Savior. We will bless the Lord at all times. God's praise shall continually be in our mouths. Our souls magnify the Lord. God's mercy endures from generation to generation. Let our souls make their boasts to the, in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Our souls magnify the Lord. The mighty one has done great things. O oh God, our deliverer, you cast down the mighty and lift up those of no account. As Elizabeth and Mary based the sounds of liberation, so may we also pray with your soul and affirm one another in hope for the world. Through Jesus Christ, amen. <laughs>
When one candle is lit, hope begins to bloom. When, when two, two candles, candles are, are lit, lit, we glimpse peace. When three candles are lit, the joy of the Christ child is near. When, when three, three candles, candles are lit, we, we proclaim, proclaim joy. joy. Listen to the scripture reading, reading from Luke. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and joy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in the remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Here ends the reading. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church.
And now Sunday school and anyone from youth group who would like to have craft arts and craft time can come downstairs now. Sarah, is it okay if I come have craft time, arts and crafts time? Oh. Oh well. Would you pray with me? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be always acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. A dream. A dream. Every year of his life, Teddy has had a coat that fits him, a coat and warm socks and snow pants for sledding down the hill near his house. He has had a house to live in, and he has had good food, good, healthy food and plenty of it which his parents can buy at a grocery store near his house and family teddy has wise and loving parents and teddy is safe he goes to school where every child has books and pencils and an art class and music and excited teachers God has filled the hungry with good things. Teddy's cousin Yuri lives in a safe place too. Their family has never been in danger. They have never lived in a refugee camp. Bombs have never landed on their road. Their water is clean and abundant. Their family has picnics among the olive trees. Yuri is safe and he will grow up to be a musician. Teddy's other cousin has chosen a new name, Kelly. And their whole family and their school and their friends have said, yes, Kelly. And their grandma knit them a bright green scarf just to help everyone remember. God has lifted up the lowly. Teddy's Aunt Mariam is a farmer. The fertile land that she lovingly tends brings forth fruit in abundance. Rain and sun come in balance. The seasons pass in beauty. There is Sabbath for the land and the people. There is good work and there is good rest. God's mercy is for those who are in awe of our creator from generation to generation. Teddy's whole family lives in a peaceful world. In a time of shalom, every faith, every ethnicity, Every skin color is respected. Kindness and dignity and neighborliness are abundant. Nation does not lift up sword against nation and neither do they learn war anymore. For the mighty one has done great things for us and holy is God's name. A person can dream, can't I? People can dream, can't we? This Advent season, we are leaning in to hope. Every week, we're not even switching gears to peace, joy, and love. We're leaning into hope. We've named the symbols of hope in this sanctuary We've talked about prophets 
of hope, who have worked actively to make the world a better place. Today, we have heard the vision of hope offered by a remarkable young woman, Mary. Mary's dream. Mary, a teenager, is asked to do something extraordinary, to give birth to the Savior. And she says, yes. She says, yes, let it be with me according to your word. And not only does she say yes, but she begins to dream and to see what the world could be. She is, you might say, pregnant with imagination, pregnant with vision, pregnant with hope. And so she sings. She sings in a powerful voice. She sings, let me tell you, world, what wonders there can be. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. And do you know what it means that Mary dreams imagines and hopes. Do you know what it means? She can see the big picture and she can see her part in it. She can see what the world can be. She can see that God has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. She can see it. She can see the story that she has agreed to be part of. She can see what the child who will be the anointed one means. Jesus could not have become Jesus the Christ without Mary the visionary. Mary has a beautiful faithfulness in the midst of mystery and even faithfulness when great difficulties come. Her belief is so powerful that she does not say, maybe things will get better maybe instead she says god has helped us in remembrance of god's mercy fred craddock wrote that so confident is mary's faith that god's justice and grace will prevail that the expression of hope is cast in the present tense mary sings as though what shall be is already true. My soul magnifies the Lord God is worthy to be praised, and the world will come around to God's ways of mercy and love and justice. The world is coming around to God's ways of mercy and love and justice. The world abides in God's way of mercy and love and justice, Mary can see it happening. Reverend Mary Ludy says, I admire Mary's perceptive faith, her capacity to perceive clearly a promised but still blurry world of divine justice and righteousness. And I admire her ability to inhabit that world now to act and speak according to promised new conditions that have yet fully to appear. I admire Mary for her religious and moral imagination. A prerequisite to building up God's reign is being able to envision it. If we hope for a world where there is enough for everyone, 
a world where every child is safe and every person is treated with dignity and respect and no one uses power to hurt and creation is renewed. If we hope for that world, do we? Do we hope for that world? I'm asking, do, do we hope for that world? Yeah. If we hope for a world like that, we have to imagine it. We have to envision it. And seeing it, we have to say yes to giving birth to it. Mary lived in a world of poverty, under Roman occupation, part of an oppressed Jewish community, and yet she dared to hope. She said yes, and she envisioned a better world, and she did her part to build it. Today, the world is full of heartache and pain, there are wars in more places than I can count. Climate change weighs on our future. Children are sleeping in motels, and adults are sleeping in doorways. What is the world that we imagine into being? What is the world that we dream about? We dream a world where no one is hungry. We dream a world where everyone has a warm bed. We dream a world where every person is beloved. We dream a world of beauty. We dream a world of peace. Oh, mercy. We dream a world of peace. We dream a world in which the earth is cared for. We dream a world where community is abundant. We dream a world where everyone is safe. We dream a world, and in dreaming for it, we say yes to it. And in saying yes to it, we build that world. Because as Meister Eckhart once wrote, we are all meant to be mothers of God, for God is always needing to be born. May it be so, but not just may it be so. Let us say that it is so and be part of it. Amen. We have a response hymn this morning. Lo, how a rose. Uh, some of us know that on Mary's Sunday, it's pink. And so I thought, lo, how a rose would be a good one for today. In the Pilgrim Hymnal 131.
We're leaving it to hope this Advent. And I continue to wonder what your hopes are. Do you have a hope that you would speak aloud? Would you share a hope that you want for this world? Folks in the Zoom, you can put yours in the chat. We'll read them out loud. My hope is that the world can come together regarding the earth and climate change and forget about wars and things this is much more important. Thank you, Bob, for a hope for action on climate change. What are our hopes? What does the world need? As always, peace. A hope for peace, yes. Hold on one second. Uh, a hope that our leaders, our elected officials and leaders will come together and realize what is best for the American people and also our international neighbors. Thank you, Lisa. I hope that college and university communities can find new paths forward and work together. Thank you. Yeah. I hope that everyone will treat each other as they would like to be treated. Thank you. That, is that Jesus? That, that's what Jesus said, right? OK. Yeah, yeah you're paraphrasing. I hope that all children can be housed and fed and healthy. I'm coming to the Zoom to see if there are hopes that people have put in the Zoom. A hope for peace. A hope for peace. That's what we all hope for the world, and there is so much more. We know that we cannot name everything out loud, but the question is, how can we be part of it? I wonder, too, about joy. Where are you finding joy right now? Um, I, I'm going to name a, a joy that I know at least more than one of our households have right now, which is that for uh, winter performances, uh, both that they have happened and are wonderful and also that they are done. Um, still got it, and, and prayers for those who still have more to go. Yep, yeah. Are there other joys in the room on this day? And Zoom folks put yours in the chat. We will come over and get you. Um, we're feeling a lot of joy and also apprehension that uh, Louisa is starting to walk. <laughs> That's right, folks. We have a walking baby Jesus. <laughs> yeah. It's a Christmas miracle. Um, but that's good news. It's, it's good. It's good. Are there other joys in the room? Yes, Andy. I get a lot of joy when I find somebody to do something for, not to write a check necessarily, but to just to do something for. And this season, there's a lot of that joy to be found. Yes, Mary. Isabella Stevens gives me joy when she sings. Yes. Yeah. Um, Isabella and Patrick have both been nominated to, selected to be in the Northeast Regional Chorus, 
and they both have been recommended to try out for all states. And you have to have a recommendation to be able to try. All right, and Patrick, by the way, is our Joseph next week, so um, that's, that's pretty awesome. That's great. Um, we celebrated somebody's 17th birthday in our house yesterday. That was very exciting. Other joys to lift up, yeah. Oh, he's, he's up, okay. So I've got two then, okay. Um, the joy of having Sammy with us um, this morning. Um, and the other one is actually um, unexpected joys. Um, and for folks to keep their eyes open and ears open for unexpected joys, I'm particularly thinking of yesterday um, evening when I came upon the Chinese, Chinese Choral Association who was performing in the sanctuary last night, and it was amazing. So, unexpected joys. I guess he's unexpected. All, all these joys, all these joys. I'm coming to check the Zoom. I think I can... Sometimes I can tell. Okay. And Zoom folks, I invite you to put your concerns in the chat too, so that we can make sure they are included in our prayers today. Um, I have three concerns that I have already heard about before the service today. Um, Isabel has an infection that has her in the hospital again, Deborah's granddaughter. So we are praying fervently for Isabel's healing after uh, a, a bumpy ride of childhood leukemia. We're praying for Elizabeth as she travels all the way around the globe to be with her father, whose health is declining. And we're praying for um, our neighbor, Steve, awaiting really important test results. Are there others that you would lift up this day in prayer? Uh, prayers for my friend Bill, his wife Marissa, and their uh, old 17-year-old cat, Bailey, who passed away to, today that he really was a, a child to them. Prayers as they are missing Bailey. Pray for the people of Ukraine in this dark time that they have luck and a lot of courage. For the people of Ukraine, yeah, thank you. I pray that somehow there might be a return to a ceasefire in Israel and Gaza, and that somehow peace may come to that place. Let us bring every prayer, every hope, every joy, every sorrow before God.
God of hope. We are brave to hope. We are brave to dream a world where there is peace. We are brave to dream a world where every child has a bed. We are brave to dream a world where everyone is treated as they want to be treated. We are brave to dream a world where elected officials all act with justice and mercy and compassion and wisdom. We are brave to dream a world where colleges and universities see a way forward after a time of conflict. And we are brave to dream a world that is literally healed from climate change. And if we are to dream, and if we are to hope, we must be part of all of this, O oh God. You call us to build this world. You call us to build peace, to build community, to live in mercy. We lift up to you, God, the people for whom we worry, the names we know, the names we do not know, the griefs that are impossible to understand. We pray for Isabel and for Steve in need of healing. We pray for Elizabeth as she travels to be with her father. We pray with Bill and Larissa as they mourn their beloved Bailey. We pray for peace, God, in a war-filled world. We pray for peace, and we ask you to give us hope. When all seems impossible, there is nothing that is impossible with you, O oh God. There is nothing that is impossible with you, O oh God, God of hope, God of peace, God of love, God of joy, we give you thanks. We, we give thanks without ceasing for all that is good, for every unexpected joy, for birthdays and children's being home and toddlers on the verge of toddling for opportunities to sing and opportunities to hear wonderful music and chances to find joy in serving our neighbors. All of it, God, all of it makes us glad and joyful in the midst of challenging days. So we pray, O oh God, that you would put in front of us hope, that you would remind us of joy, that you would be our bedrock of peace. And we ask it all in the name of the, of the child that you sent who would grow to become our teacher and our savior. We pray it in the name of Jesus who taught us these words, which we pray together now. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We dream a world, and then we build it. That is part of what our offerings mean. Our morning offering will now be gratefully received. Your faithfulness never fails. Take and use these gifts we offer to further your purpose in the world. Amen. Our closing hymn is Mary's song, My Soul Gives Glory to My God, number 119 in the New Century.
and now. Let us go forth in hope. Let us sing out. Our souls magnify the Lord. Our spirits rejoice in God our Savior. And let us be about making this world the world Mary and Jesus and God have envisioned. May it be so. Amen. Thank you.